We could have played Name That Tune. Did you get all of them in there? Gerald may be the only one in the building that got all the tunes. That Hey, it is so good to see you here tonight. We're in for a special treat, but we get to sing together before we hear Greater Vision. Stand together as we sing together. Years I spent in vanity and pride if I
behind you. Maybe introduce yourself. Tell them you're glad they're here. Let's greet each other. sing together. Oh, the love and true salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty hope that God did span. And Calvary, mercy there was great and grace was free. Lord, and there was multiplied to me. There I heard his hope found liberty. Well, let's join our hearts together in prayer. Would you join me, please? Our Father, we humbly approach your throne tonight and recognize that when the hymn writer penned the words, he penned that which is biblical, that all is vain, unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. And Lord, we not only pray for the work of the Spirit in this concert, in this time of fellowship and sharing of gospel music we more specifically pray that it would happen in my heart and in our hearts it is not our brother it is not our sister but it's each of us O oh Lord that stands in the need of a fresh work of grace and in a world that gropes in darkness and with spiritual death and decay all around us we are thankful for the one who is life life eternal and life abundant and as much as light dispels darkness, the life of Christ overcomes the spiritual death of the hour for all who turn to him in simple faith and repentance. And we pray tonight that you will do a deep work in our lives. Make our hearts joy-filled over so very much that joy should reign deep in us over. We could be as lost as anyone anywhere, but grace has found us, and we've been made accepted through the Beloved One, not because you came to do something for good people, but we are reminded that Christ died for sinners, and we are thankful that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And tonight we are aware that we would still be there had it not been for what you have done and continue to do in our lives. So now we pray for the anointing and touch of the Spirit of God on all that is presented in this place tonight. We are so grateful to be together. I'm grateful, O oh God, for the men and women that you've called in kingdom service. I'm aware that every person in this room who knows you in saving grace is called to some degree to do something by way of kingdom work. Now may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth in our hearts just like it is in heaven during this time that we're here tonight. Whoever might be present that feels hopeless, may you give them hope. Whoever feels so discouraged, may you give them encouragement. And he or she who feels no sense of your presence and power May you touch them as you in your infinite wisdom know they need touching. We rejoice, not so much that demons are subject to us, but we sure rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so we pray tonight that the Spirit of God would be rich and real. As we surrender to you, in behalf of this people, I reject and renounce every unclean spirit. You're not wanted among the people of God. You are a trespasser. You go exactly where Christ sends you. We crown Jesus Christ Lord of this place tonight. And if the redeemed of the Lord agree, would you say so with an amen? Thank you, our Father, for all you will do. 
We will praise you both now and forever. And we make our prayers collectively in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Be seated. It is a tremendous joy to welcome some folks back to this platform that we feel like are part of the Morningside family. Would you welcome Greater Vision, please? Consider circumstances growing out of control. Do you debate your dilemmas? Speculate on the outcomes. It can sure weigh heavy on your soul. But if you think about no more fears in a land where tears are forever wiped away. If you think about going home and the joy you'll know seeing Jesus face to face. Sure, there's a hope beyond compare. It'll really help you live down here, though trouble's coming near. If you think about this, instead of fretting about tomorrow, focus on a new song rising out of heaven and the glory we will share. Instead of bogging down and humdrum, chart a course for the kingdom. It'll do you so much good to think about there. Cause if you think about no more fears in a land where tears are forever wiped away. If you think about going home and the joy you'll know seeing Jesus face to face. Your fear of the future fades when you're sure there's a hope beyond compare. It'll really help you live down here though trouble's coming near. If you think about If you think about no more fears in a land where tears are forever wiped away. If you think about going home and the joy you'll know seeing Jesus face to face. Your fear of the future fades when you're sure there's a hope beyond compare. It'll really help you live down here though troubles come to me.
Well, it is always good to be at Morningside. Thank you uh, for allowing us to come back all these years. And I've got to just say one uh, thing I've noticed is a lot of you have gotten older. Um, <laughs> actually, I can't even see. I got, I got my uh, up-close contacts in tonight, and I can see this. But all of you are a blur. But the good news is I don't see a single wrinkle <laughs> anywhere. So y'all look great. So thanks for coming. Today is my mom's 87th birthday. And, um, yep, she probably played the piano at her church this morning. She's been doing that for about... 65 or 66 years now and uh, if she was there and able to play this is what it probably sounded like <laughs>
presence with a song of praise and a heart that is grateful and searching for ways to tell you I'm thankful for all that you are to me when my soul is troubled you are my peace when I am weak you are my strength when others forsake me you are my friend when battles keep raging you're my defense when my heart is broken you are my healer when I need a saving you were my savior when I come to worship whenever I see are my king. Sometimes I stop and think just where I would be if your hands of mercy had not rescued me. You give grace undeserved, unfailing love. You're always just what I need. When my soul is troubled, you are my peace. When I am weak, you are my strength. When others forsake me, you are my friend. When battles keep raging, you're my defense. When my heart is broken, Whenever I sing, you are my King. Lord, you are faithful, amazing, loving, unchanging. What you've been for others is what you are to me and always will be. You are my friend. You are my by the guy who sang it. His name is John Epley, and that is his very first number one song. And uh, he, yeah, it's really kind of good for that, yeah. John is, how many of you written all together now, John? How many songs on yeah. it? Uh, about seven. Okay, that's good. That's almost 15% hits. It's yeah, good. Yeah. Now, you, of course, Rodney over there. Rodney, how many of you written all together now? Uh, about 500. How many number ones? Um, I believe it's 19. Wow. Well, see there, John, you've got a better percentage than Rodney does. <laughs> Chris, how many of you written total? Uh, 501. Oh, no, you haven't. Here, here is John's latest song, and I love this lyric. She could barely remember life without pain. For 12 years, it was all she had known. He could only imagine eyes that could see as the blind man sat in darkness 
alone but they'll never forget when they heard his name Jesus the healer is here and as he drew close their hearts filled with hope as faith spoke these words to their souls your healing is on the way this is the day your life will change your pain is temporary this suffering that you carry soon will be Fighting each day just to smile Knowing he's promised to answer your prayers But you see no end to this trial God may be using your faithful testimony To touch more lives than you ever did before so just keep believing, telling your story, and claiming this promise in faith. Your healing is on the way. The healer remembers your name. Your pain is temporary, this suffering that you carry. Soon will be taken away. Your healing is on the way. God's promised healing to all of His children in His perfect time and His way. Some will receive it in this life we're living. Some when we see him face to face, but until that moment, he's holding you close, and he will give peace in the pain. Your healing is on the way, your healing.
He's the guy on the end over there. He was our original tenor when we started. He's been my favorite tenor 32 years in a row, which is a new record. And, uh, Appreciate that. For I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, what'd you say? I said thank you for that. That For what? <laughs> you said that for, uh, for 32 years I'd been your favorite tenor. And that, 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 wow, that that had set a record. So that, wow. very meaningful to me. Fine. Um, <laughs> seriously, it's not every day you get to see a man his age what? <laughs> who still hey, sings know, like a girl, you know, right? <laughs> so he's got to do, I know a man who can. For he's my 
We have a uh, a uh, brand new Pat Paul on the uh, platform tonight. His name is Rodney Griffin, and he's in the middle. Everybody knows him as a songwriter, and uh, he's in the Hall of Fame and all of that. But the biggest thing is being a Pat Paul, because that's where you get to actually be involved in changing somebody's life and touching them with the gospel on an individual basis. And so we don't have a picture of your grand. Do we have a picture, Robert? Of uh, We don't have a picture. Rodney's got a bunch. <laughs> He'll be glad to show you. I mentioned my mom turning 87 today. You know, I uh, grew up in a church, small church in uh, East Tennessee, and um, the only people that I remember to this day are the older people. And I don't know why. I, I could be because they made such an impression on me, and uh, they invested into my life and always encouraged me and most of them, I never knew their first names. I only knew their last name. And everybody, all the women, had the same first name. It was Miss or Mrs. <laughs> and all the men had the same first name. It was Mr. And that's the way I grew up. And my mom told me not long ago, she said, uh, I feel like I'm not much use to the church anymore. She can't see very well, and she finally talked another lady into playing the piano most of the time. But I got to tell you, there is great value in those people who have stood by the stuff for decades and decades. And uh, Rodney wrote a song about it and um, tell, tell me where you got the idea and how you wrote it. Yes, I, I wanted to honor the greatest generation I've ever known, uh, our parents' generation. I wanted to honor them with a song. You know, they used to be the ones that, that helped grow the church into what it is today and now they just kind of are there and um, they have so much to offer, if we'll ask. And I, I got with Jim Brady. I said, Jim, there's a generation of people that were the moral compass for America for years. And uh, it's not too late to hear what they have to say. So we, we went together and we wrote this. So whether this is for you or someone else, They grew up in a day of black and white Where wrong was always wrong and right was always right You never had to wonder come Sunday where they'd be With their sons and daughters in pew number three but now this modern age has them feeling out of touch. The church has turned the page, isn't asking them for much. They're a fortune of knowledge, they've been through the fire. And to have them here among us, just think how blessed we are. Their wrinkles tell the story of how they made it through. They face the rain and weathered storms, their scars are living proof. Their wisdom is a treasure right underneath our steeple. We 
could learn so much if we take the time to listen to older people. They can tell us how revival will melt a hardened heart, how teardrops on our Bibles is always where it starts. And when the way seems hopeless, the church can still achieve if we'll preach the gospel boldly and stay on our knees. I'd rather hear from those who've been there telling how they overcame as they walked a road familiar and did it all in Jesus' name. Their wrinkles tell the story of how they made it through. They faced the rain and weathered storms, their scars are living proof. Their wisdom is a treasure right underneath our steeples. We can learn so much if we take the time to I don't want to miss the chance to sit and listen. We'll be blessed if we'll only pause and listen. Pause and listen to older people. Amen.
took the lifeless body down from Calvary struggled just to stand beneath the load the blood spilled on his hands and on his clothing still Joseph sang as he stumbled down the road I'll carry him upon my shoulder I'll bear the marks endure the shame I'll serve my friend till life is over and that is when the world will see he'll carry me with every step his mind replayed the memory of the day the Lord had made his life anew. So this load on Joseph's back was not so heavy compared to the promise that was waiting at the tomb. Well, I too have walked beneath the heavy burden stumbled down a dark and lonely road I'm hard not to be discouraged knowing victory awaits when I
have the clouds round you gather in the midst of the storm is your ship tossed and battered are you weary and worn don't lose hope someone's praying for you this very day and peace be still is already on the way someone is praying for you So when it seems you're all alone and your heart will break in two, remember someone is praying for you. When it seems that you've prayed Till your strength is all gone And your tears fall like raindrops All the day long Jesus cares and he knows just How much you can bear He'll Speak your name to someone in prayer. Someone is praying for you. So when you feel you're all alone and your heart will break in two, remember someone is praying for you. So Remember someone is praying for you. That beautiful song. People all the time will tell you they are praying for you. It is a very easy thing to say. Usually I can tell when somebody says it to me if they really mean it or if it's just a uh, Christian greeting. A few nights ago we were in North Carolina. Y'all know I've had this uh, neck muscle problem for years and uh, a guy walked up to me and he said we've been praying for you ever since we heard about your stroke 
And I said, well, keep it up. It's working. He said, he said is it? I said, yeah, I've never had a stroke. <laughs> but every now and then, the Lord really will bring somebody to your mind when you are not even thinking about them. And he will prompt you to, pr to pray for them right then. And if you don't believe somebody is praying for you, then you really don't understand what Jesus is doing right now. The Bible says that right now, He is praying for you. He is interceding for you. The Holy Spirit is right now speaking to the Father on your behalf, telling Him things that you can't even utter because you don't have the words. So when you feel you're all alone and your heart would break into remember somebody is praying for you. We were uh, in Boston, Massachusetts not long ago and somebody requested this song that we hadn't done in over a year, maybe two years. So we did it that night just because somebody asked. And then we found out why. Here's the song. They sat down for supper in their quiet little house Looked at one another, what was God doing now? Times were hard and debts must be paid Where was God? So little food on their plates Then the daddy broke his silence and the kids just listened in he said when I face a challenge and feel like giving in I go back to my favorite memory to be exact it happened here in Galilee when my mama woke me up and said that we were going out to hear on a hill outside of town We listened to his sermon People needed fed I handed him my lunch You know the rest So no matter how hard life may get I remember the fish You should have seen all the fish You see, I'd often heard of miracles But never witnessed one until I was watching the impossible Saw those baskets fill with so much food There were faces full of joy How my faith grew that day is just a boy So children learn this lesson Listen to your dad Miracles will happen When you give God all you have Then when you're weak Draw strength from that day When he met your need And he multiplied your faith Like when my mama woke me up and said that we were going out To hear a man named Jesus on a hill outside
side of town. We listened to his sermon. People needed fed. I handed him my lunch. You know the rest. So no matter how hard life may get, just remember the fish. Forget what he did Just remember the fish Start us off and sing that chorus for us, ladies. Oh, how now, just the men he gave his life, men sing. Just the ladies, just the men, everyone say. My favorite word in that wonderful chorus is probably the smallest word in the chorus. It's that little word, oh. You know that Jesus loves you tonight, right? We've sung about it. Brother Wayne preaches about it every time he's up here. You know he loves you, but did you know this? Oh, how he loves you. There's passion. There's blood sacrifice. You can never walk out of here and say, there is nobody that loves me. Gerald told you that we sang up in Boston, and they really do talk funny in Boston. So afterward, a gentleman came up to the table. He said, can I tell you all why my favorite song you do is I remember the fish. Yes, sir. He said, several years ago, my wife suddenly walked out and left me with a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. He said, I looked around and said, how am I going to raise these kids? We were already living on paycheck to paycheck, and now it was just one check. He said, it dawned on me that first night. I've got to fix these kids some supper. He said, I searched through our cabinets, and all we had in the house was one bag of popcorn. He said, I pulled it out of the cabinet, and I put it in the microwave, and the corn began popping. And the kids began rejoicing. Yay, we get popcorn for supper. They didn't know that's all they had. 
he said the little buzzer buzzed and I took the popcorn out of the microwave and put it in their little bowls around the table. I said, kids, let's thank the Lord for our supper. He said, we bowed our heads and I began to thank the Lord for the popcorn. He said, I don't know how. While I'm praying, there's a knock at the door. We finished. We finished blessing the popcorn. And he said, I stood up and went to the door and, and opened it. And there on the front porch were three bags of groceries. He said, we will never forget the day. We had nothing. But we had him. And that was enough. He said, that's our fish story. And we like telling it. And surely we could spend all night in here sharing fish stories. That time God came through for you just in time. The doctor looked at you, sir, and said, I don't know why, but the cancer's gone. Or ma'am, your husband walked the aisle and received Christ after those years of praying. Fish stories that build our faith. And there are others here. You're still waiting. You're still praying. You're still believing. We just stopped by tonight to say, among other things, you know Jesus loves you. Please realize this. Oh, how he loves you. You're on his heart tonight. He hears every prayer. He's close to you. He wants you to trust him. Can we sing to him one more time? Oh, how he loves you. He loves us. While Gerald plays, would you just stand? No other moving around yet. Just stand. How we have been spoken to through the truth of the scriptures and music. Jesus went to a cross to say, I love you. The question tonight is, do we love him? If he went to a cross to say to each of us, I love you. When was the last time you went down to an altar just to say back to him, and Lord, I love you? I don't know what's happened in our churches across the land. I'm talking about even in the deep south. There's a reticence, a hesitation about coming to an altar. People who came to altars and got on their knees and others who came to the altar and wasn't able to get on theirs, they just came is what made our churches have revival and an outpouring of God's Spirit. As Gerald plays, would you like to come just say to the Lord, I love you, and when you get here, if there's anything else you want to tell him, will not you tell him that as well? You don't have to say a word to me. Now, if you want to know Christ, I'd be happy to tell you how to be saved, but as Gerald plays, you want to come just tell the Lord you love him and go back to your seat. to an altar 
would you while you're here just say to the Lord Lord would you have mercy and send revival to our churches to our homes and to our land when you're finished talking to the Lord just go back to your seat Esther I would go but I don't think there's room there for all of us you let me worry about the room when you get here there'll be people going back out if you want to come and do that just do that would you All of God's children said what? Amen. Amen and praise God. I'm going to ask you to be seated just a moment. I want to say just a word of appreciation to Greater Vision. You know, probably folks at a concert like this, a pastor ought to be put in a box where nobody can see him or hear him. On any given day, we who are pastors know personal things about our people. And our hearts break for them. And God has used you and spoken to things you'll have no idea how through song. And that's what we prayed for, didn't we? We asked God to use these people and to speak to our hearts. Amen. When you hear Lazarus, do you remember that time when at the tomb door of your heart, you were dead in trespasses and sins? And the effectual call of the Spirit through the gospel said, come forth. Now, many a preacher had invited you, and you didn't respond. But, boy, when the Spirit of God spoke that day to you, something happened. When they were singing, he'll carry me. Truth of it is, he's carried us through this night, and he will carry us all the way. Do you encounter the work of his Spirit while this is underway? Well... What a blessing, what a joy, what a Savior. Praise Jesus. I want to just mention to you, I know you know this is true, but I don't have any idea since they were here last year how many new projects, new recordings are on their product table. Go by, and you probably, like me, can think of somebody that's not here. Boy, I wish they'd have been here. Why don't you take part of the concert to them? Go by and purchase something off that table and give to somebody that will be a way that you can witness to them that you personally could not do <laughs> being a little humorous here they might not want you to sing that song to them but they will hear it from greater vision and so give give them a witness in that and uh, share christ with them and keep praying keep praying keep praying keep praying don't let up one day in god's presence we will be so grateful that we stood by the stuff and continued to keep on keeping on. Also tonight, before you leave, you'll notice in this room, as you leave this room to go in the foyers, they're offering receptacles. And we just take a love offering. And the love offering is simply our expression of gratitude to God for sending his servants who trust him every day and every week. They don't have General Motors or Ford Motor Company or some major to underwrite them. They're out here trusting God and God's people. And the Bible says he who entertains a righteous man in the name of a righteous man gets a righteous man's reward. And he, he who entertains a prophet in the name of a prophet gets a prophet's reward. I believe that God looks at everything we do, every thought we have, and every word we say. And tonight as we give something to greater vision, our Lord records that. And one day when the judgment seat of Christ for the redeemed takes place... 
you might just absolutely be shocked out of your gourd just what God was recording and how that tonight as we think we give to the church or we think we give to uh, just these people who serve us, we're actually giving to the Lord. So tonight I hope you'll write a very generous check to Greater Vision. Make it payable to Morningside. We're going to write one check for all that you give them. Every penny you give for them will go to them. And I have been so blessed tonight. And I want to thank you. You're part of that blessing to be here. Now, Greater Vision could probably have done just as well, but they prefer to sing in a building where there's people. And so tonight, thank you for being present because that's part of their ministry into the hearts of people. Now, guys, are y'all going to close out with anything? Okay, okay, good. And when they have completed, remember that to give them a moment to try to get back to the table, and they'll be there to wait on you. Show your love to them one more time and appreciation. We'll do that. <laughs> Now his disciples cry. So Jesus rose to stand against the tempest, knowing his disciples had no faith. Just to prove that he was still the master, he spoke, and the wind and seas obeyed. But he's still been God, even if he never caught a storm on the raging sea. He's still been God, even if he never caught the blind. He'd still be God even if he never brought a crippled man to his feet. It's not about what he did, it's all about who he was. Cause even if he never come and found a single miracle, that Jesus would have still been God. Mary was his loving earthly mother. She understood the purpose of her son. Ever since the angels come and told her, this child is a blessed son of God. So when she'd see the people gather around him, watching for a miracle to prove that he would be their one and great Messiah, she just smiled because she already knew. He'd still be God even if he never come a storm on the raging sea. He's still in God, even if he never calls a fire that I to see. He's still in God, even if he never brought a crippled man to his feet. It's not about what he did, it's all about who he was. Cause even if he never come and done a single miracle, that Jesus would have still been God. He's still in God, even if he never calmed a storm on the raging sea. He'd still be God, even if he never caused a blind to die to see. He'd still be God, even if he never brought a crippled man to do his feet. Cause even if he never come and not a single miracle, that Jesus would have still been God. Oh, he's still been God, even if he never caused a storm on the rain to see. He'd still be God, even if he never caused a blind to die to see.